mean value theorem. So again, it's another wordy description, but if you decipher everything, it's still very understandable. So if f is continuous on AB, so we have that same function f that has to be continuous on AB, that's our f of x there in purple, then there exists a number c in A and B such that this is true. So all that's basically saying is that there has to be some c value here that would give us an f of c equal to the average value. And that's what our green is. The green is our average value. So we have actually two here. I'm going to call this one C2 right there and right there. So when we look at our function f of x, we add up the entire total, right? And this one we would divide by four. Well, by doing that, it gives us 5.25. And so you can see that's where that line is drawn here. So the area in this green rectangle is exactly the same area that's in the purple. It's just been redistributed into an average value. So if you remember here, we take the total of each one, divide it by four, and that comes out to 5.25, which means we can then take and redistribute this extra purple and start filling in the other parts, giving us a 5.25 per unit across. And so if you make that line that goes straight across, what you're getting are two x values that would give you that 5.257 that we're looking for. So these would be the c's. That's all the mean values theorem is saying. If you have some big function here, right, then obviously the average is going to be in between the smallest and the largest. Well, in this case, the smallest and the largest because it's an average value. Think about it like a test. If you got a 65 on one test and 100 on the next test, your average is somewhere in between those. Well, it's the same basic idea. And so if it's between it and the function is continuous, well, that average value has to intersect at at least one point there. And that's all it's staying is that we have some x value that we can plug into our function that would be exactly the same as what we get for the average value. So let's try one to kind of get an idea of what's going on here. So first we're gonna find the average value of f on the given interval. So we go one over eight take away zero, integral from zero to eight of the cube root of x dx, and then we plug that into our calculator. And that gives us 1.5. So now we need to find some value of c that if we plug it into the function, it gives us the average. So this is what we're asking it here. So our average here is 1.5, all right, 1.5 per unit. And our C here is what we're looking for. So if I plug C into our function, we get the cube root of C equals 1.5. And now it gives us an equation that we can find that C value that we need. So if we cube 1.5, we get 3.375. So that means that if we plug that in to our function, that's where our mean's going to be. So right here is our 3.375. And plugging that in then would be 1.5. You see if we follow it across right there. So f of our c, f of c is right there. So that would be, uh, what is it, 3.375 comma, 1.5. And we already know that because we resolved it. And so a C of, of 3.375 would give you a, an F of C of 1.5, which is the average. So now if I redistribute everything like this from 0 to 8, then the area in the purple is exactly the same as the area under the green. And if you see where they intersect, it's right there. So that's all it means by the mean value is that it has to be some value of C that is the average itself. So here's a better picture of our drawn and you can see it's been redistributed. So each of these little rectangles here is 1.5. And if you were to take and add up all the purple and then divide them by eight, it would also come out to 1.5. And so plugging in 3.375, gives us the average value. That's all it's saying, that there has to be some C, that if you plug it in your function, it would be exactly the same as the average value. All right, so let's try it again. So find the average value. So we go integral from one to two, and that will add up all of them. It's negative one. And then we have to do our fraction, so we have to divide it in number of parts. So two minus negative one would be three. And then we plug that in our calculator. 
And so I'm just plugging in our calculator. We've done enough integrals now that I want to make sure that you understand this concept, not making mistakes with the integral. So we end up with two. So again, if we were to take and add up all those values, divide it by three, we would get two. And we want to make sure that we find some C value, because there has to be one, because one plus X squared is a polynomial. It is continuous on that interval. So now if I plug in C into my function, I will be able to find two. So let's subtract one. Square root of one plus or minus. So we would end up with C equals plus or minus one. So we actually have two C values here. So what is our area here? It's two, so let's draw that rectangle. Let's first actually draw what we're looking for. So from one to two, right? This would be our total area. And again, we divide it into three parts. And by doing that, we find out that it's two. So going across here, that green area would be exactly the same as the purple area. And you can see exactly where they cross. One hits here and one hits here. So we end up with negative one comma two and one comma two. So what's our C value? One and negative one. So there is a, an X value we can plug in that would be exactly the same as our average value. So here's a little better picture. So again, we added up those areas, divided it by three, it gave us two. We draw a rectangle at two and look where they cross at right there and there. So it's all we're doing with the equation is saying, when does our function equal two? Well, that would be at negative one and one. So that fits our mean value theorem, that there has to be some X value that we can plug into our function that would be exactly the same Y value as the average. And so that is basically saying that if we redistribute this function into a rectangle, their point of intersection would have to be possible, that there has to be some way. This average will always be below the highest and above the lowest. And since it's continuous, well, there's got to be some point in there as well.